In this video, I am gonna discuss the difference between fear and anxiety in your dog. You won't wanna miss this one. Stay tuned. I'm Denise Mazzola from Everything Dog. This is Geo. We are back today to talk about fear and anxiety. If your dog is, maybe you're in a training session and they stop eating, maybe they won't eat during walks, maybe during certain times they're shaking, drooling, foaming at the mouth, they may be reactive on your walks, charging, lunging, barking, growling. There's all kinds of ways that our pet dogs will display fear and anxiety. And the two are very different. So let's get into it. All right, so the difference between fear and anxiety is that fear is a reaction to a particular stimulus, a thing, something in the environment. So for me, I'm very fearful of spiders. So you'll see a very different reaction from me if I am near a spider or if one's crawling near me or and all sorts of things. Geo here is not particularly fond of young children, and so you'll see his eyes get really big. We call it whale eye. We see the whites of his eyes. He's very fearful around young children. That's the only time you really see that in him. Otherwise, he's pretty mellow fellow, okay? So fear is a reaction to a stimulus in a situation. And generally, when that thing is gone, when the children are gone, when the spiders are gone, we can recover fairly quickly, okay? Now, anxiety, that's a completely different beast. Anxiety is apprehension, anticipation of a threat that is not present, right? You're worried it will come. Your dog is anxious about everything, maybe looking around, sort of scouting things out. Maybe they get really what looks like stoic. It looks like they're calm, but it could also, also be that the dog is shut down. Okay, so anxiety is kind, and you can have different levels of anxiety. You can have like a very low humming level of anxiety. It's not really affecting your dog too much. You know, I would say that Geo has a small amount of anxiety. Like he's very attached to me and sometimes can get a little worried if he doesn't know where I'm going. But it doesn't manifest in any way that causes him issues or me issues. So for example, when I get out of a car, so we did this trial thing and I got out of the car to walk to the bathroom and he could see me. He would, he would lay down if I was sitting in my chair, but if I got up, he started to look out the window and he watched me. But he doesn't bark, he doesn't vocalize. So in my opinion, there's just a little bit of anxiety there humming under the surface, but it doesn't manifest in any way that causes him or me distress. It doesn't cause him any issues as well. Okay, so let's just talk about anxiety in people. If, if a person is anxious, they may be worried, uneasy. They sort of feel like the bad thing is going to happen at any time, right? And, and maybe they can't really pinpoint why it's happening, but they just have this overall feeling. It's sort of a, you know, we had a dog named Frankie has since passed on, but he was, he had a generalized anxiety disorder. He was anxious about anything and everything, the environment, sounds, wind, all sorts of things. And if he had one bad experience, for example, he heard a very loud bang or boom or explosion or something when he was out in the woods and literally would never go on a trail again without exaggeration. So he was a very anxious dog on medication for it. Yet when a scary thing happened, that would be it. He'd generalize it to everything. So the fear response would generalize because he had this anxiety thing going on. So most dogs will have a, can have a fear response to a particular situation. Sound, you know, thunder, there are plenty of dogs that are afraid of thunder, but the absence of thunder, they're perfectly okay, right? The anxiety does not sort of continue to stay with them. Let me just recap. In this video, we talked real quick about the difference between fear and anxiety. Fear being specific, you have a reaction, a person does, a dog does, to a particular stimulus, to a spider, to young children, to thunder, to loud noises, to motorcycles, whatever it might be, right? And an anxiety, a dog that is suffering from anxiety, and I use the word suffering because 
a lot of dogs do suffer with anxiety. They can't metacognate. They don't know that things might get better, okay? So anxiety is like, is always happening. It's maybe under the surface. It may be depending on how much anxiety your dog has, but it's this constant uneasy feeling that the bad thing is going to come. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you don't miss any of our uploads. And next week on this, on this channel, we are gonna be talking about medication, you guys, and how it can help your dogs. Some of you are so resistant to this. You'll put a shock collar on your dog, but you won't give them medication to help. We're, that's what we're talking about next week. I'll see you then.